Okay, before I go further, I want to explain that uh, uh, what we are going to get. Okay, one thing is that if you make a section plane, uh, you can change the section plane by clicking here and uh, you can rotate the plane. Number one. Uh, number two is that you can select the new sketching plane. So that is like going to, going to be here. So now these are impellers. So let me give you an idea uh, what we are going to do, what we are going to achieve. So we are going to achieve this thing, which I have already shown you in the previous video. Uh, and uh, that is uh, over here. Okay, this is what the, is the target. So, but I will be telling you that uh, what is the idea. The idea is very simple. We have to create the, uh, the domains like one is going to be this volume. And this will be definitely the subtraction from the tank volume. So the tank volume will be remaining. So this will be the fixed one. This will be the fixed one and now rotating. This one will be rotating the impeller one more uh, domain. This will be rotating domain. And similarly around the second uh, impeller we have the we have to create a region, a fluid region, a control volume. And this will also be rotating. Now we can solve this one with the help of MRF or uh, multiple reference frames. And this is a steady state technique. And this is also called as the frozen rotor in CFX. And uh, the corresponding command in, in the fluent is uh, in the sales zone is the frame motion. And the second one is going to be the sliding mesh. And this is uh, transient, understudy. And uh, the corresponding name in the fluent uh, when you uh, provide the sales zone condition is the uh, mesh motion. The difference is that in the in the steady state, uh, we are providing the RPM to in, in, in the both cases. The one thing is that the MRF is like uh, fixing the position of the impeller at the uh, in the space. So this will be like a single position solution around the geometry, but the momentum terms and other terms, they are already imported into the fluid. So it will be having those effects already. For example, if you run this case in the steady state, you will be getting the vortices and the flow will be moving from going inside and will be going outside like we will be seeing in the uh, sliding mesh. But only difference is that the sliding mesh is like a, a superset and that contains the like the position of the rotor at different angles. So if you run the case for like a one time step for the one degree, so the frame motion is like a one particular position of the impeller. That's a one subset of the sliding mesh simulation. So definitely when there is there is not any movement, so it is not uh, moving in the space. So no time will be there, but if this is moving in the space, definitely it will be based on time frame. So this is going to be transient case. Okay, so this is what we are going to achieve here, but I'm not going to run the simulation. Maybe I will be teaching you the, the meshing. Okay, so before I go uh, here, I want to teach you that uh, the impellers have the few issues. Number one is that there is a gap between the hub and the shaft. So that you can fill by uh, using the pull command and click on no merge. Select the boundary here and uh, then add up to the this surface. Same thing we can do can also do for the this bottom part. And but right now I am just working on the first impeller. Then we start working on the second impeller. The second thing is that if you take a look on the geometry, you can see the length of the height of blade is 100 millimeters. And here's 100 millimeters, they are exactly same. And here the length of the blade here, this is equal to 200 millimeters. And same is over here. And the next thing is that the height of the hub should be same as the height of the blade. Okay, so but we can measure it directly by taking the two surfaces, this surface and sorry, this surface and this surface. So this is uh, the height of the uh, impeller hub is the 100 millimeters. And same technique you can also use here.
and you have to press the control key for selecting the second phase and this is also equal to 100 millimeter so they are also equal uh, number another thing is that the diameter here is a 125.1 millimeter but this is not a concerning thing right now so first thing that is we are going to do is that we have to hide the shaft so triple click and click on hide before we go further the first important thing is that because every uh, movement we are going to make like moving the geometry in translation or a rotation it depends on the uh, we are assuming geometry is already on the global center okay so if this is not passing through the global center the axis of the rotation then every movement especially the movement in the uh, in the angular positions they will become the wrong one okay so that we cannot risk here so first thing is that you must ensure that the we have the rotation axis passing through the uh, the zero uh, of these two coordinates so if the, this is right now is uh, my rotation axis so z and x should be zero on the that axis so now that to confirm we have to make a one point here so let me show you that how this can be done so i am going to display the shaft here this is shaft here and you can also rename by right clicking and you can also move it outside like here okay so this shaft center is going through the center so its center should be exactly on the global center so i'm going to make the one sketch here and i'm going to make the one point on this location here okay now go back to 3d mode and uh, i'm going to put the one origin over here okay and uh, now you can right click on the this uh, origin center by clicking on the move command and click here so right click here you can see the xyz after right clicking so the y is axis of rotation it cannot it can be having any value at this point but the two other coordinates like z and x they should be zero but right now you can see the x is equal to minus 40.85 this should be equal to zero but this should be zero for everything means everything is attached to the shaft so they should also move with the shaft as well so you have to uh, display the volume here and uh, then you have to select everything including the this origin which is here so select all and uh, because because we have selected everything here so then you can see here that everything is selected so make this uh, uh, this origin to the this uh, origin we created here the single point and uh, then right click on this uh, cube here and then choose x y z and just simply make the zero value in the x coordinate uh, by clicking on the keyboard and then press enter key simple okay so you can see that uh, that origin is also moving there so now you can click here right click here and uh, you can confirm the x y z coordinate so this is 0 uh, x 0 z it means that now geometry is at the global uh, center location 